What's up YouTube, it's your boy Nash here, welcome back to the channel, and today I'm going to be giving you guys my predictions for Money in the Bank with the most unique match, with the most unique unique Money in the Bank ladder match ever. So we, so, as of now there are six matches on the card right now, um, supposedly there's going to be at least one more sometime that will be announced sometime in, in, in the next several days. Which, to my in which to my to my recollection, uh, could very may well be the Street Profits defending their Raw Tag Tiles against the Viking Raiders, which is a possibility, seeing as how, seeing as how how the Viking Raiders won against the Profits this past Monday on Raw. So, but you never know what yet. You never know. You never know what matches will be announced. For Sunday, but but we kicked things off with the match that was announced last week on SmackDown, as the New Day will defend the SmackDown Tag Titles against against the against the Lucha House Party, Miz and John Morrison. Sorry, guys, I had to take my show off my necklace against the against the, against the Lucha House Party, Miz and Morrison, the former champions, and the newest acquisitions. To SmackDown, the Forgotten Sons, which obviously could, which obviously will be Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake with Jackson Riker at ringside. This is gonna be a, this is gonna be unique because, because if you guys remember at WrestleMania, if if you guys if you guys remember at WrestleMania, um, uh, John Morrison, um. Literally stole the SmackDown tag titles under the nose of Co un under the noses of Jimmy Uso and um, and Kofi Kingston of of the New Day, which we found out that Jimmy Uso was take what was actually injured during during that match, so he'll he'll be out for a pretty good while. So the Usos once again are out of action again, and for how long? Who knows? Uh, Forgotten Sons. Uh, they've been pretty dominant as as of late over the last over, over the last couple weeks. I've been I've been I've been impressed with them. Of course, too. Of, of course, too, I was already impressed with them when they were in in NXT. So it's not it's no surprise there. Lucha House Party last week on SmackDown, they just guys. I'm telling you, they upset Miz and Morrison last week. That was which was like like what a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it was like a couple weeks ago. That which was incredible. Incredible victory for the for the Lucha House Party. Um, honestly, though, I think when you, I, I think it comes down to who can take the the you know who can take the opportunity more. And I think no one and and I think if, if there was any team that can take an opportunity like that, it would have to be the Forgotten Sons. So I'm so I'm. So I'm going to predict that the Forgotten Sons are going to win the SmackDown Tag Team Titles. All right, all right, you guys. Next up, we have the WWE Championship defended as Drew McIntyre will defend against Seth Rollins. This is actually this is actually Drew's second title defense ever. His, his second defense ever. His first one was at WrestleMania when he actually defeated Brock Lesnar. Actually, Big Show, the Big Show. Uh, returned uh, to WWE to challenge McIntyre for said championship. And McIntyre actually beat Big Show. As crazy as it sounds, he beat the Big Show, which was awesome. So, so this will actually be his second defense ever. I think honestly, I'm just gonna go and say it, when you've when your champion, when you've had your like first first and second title defense. You cannot lose it. You can't lose it. If you lose it, then your career just goes just like that, just like that. Um, so I'm gonna have to go with Drew McIntyre on on this one, only because of the fact that while it is true that that Seth Rollins may have his you know you know one of his disciples Murphy you know at his side. It does not matter. It comes down to, it comes down to experience. And McIntyre, McIntyre has been around for quite a long time. He's been around since twenty, since actually, actually since two thousand nine. So he's been around for quite a while, and um, he's won several championships in, in his day. He's won the Intercontinental Title. He's won the 
tag titles. He's won the Raw tag titles. Um, and he's even won the, and now, you know, obviously now he's WWE, you know, he's the WWE champion. So, I gotta go with McIntyre on this one. Alright, you guys, next up we have Braun Strowman defending the Universal Championship against Bray Wyatt in a match that's what, that's what? Five years in the making, I'd say? Yeah. 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 So, this match is a match, is a match five years in the making. Five years ago, almost to the day, damn, actually, it'll be five years, what, in the summer, I, I believe? So, five years ago, sometime in the summer, Braun Strowman made, made his debut in WWE, coming up from, coming up from NXT, under the tutelage, if you will, of Bray Wyatt. He was a part. He was a part of his. He was a part of the Wyatt family from that night all the way up until the 2016 WWE draft. Ever since, ever since the draft, Braun Strowman has went at it on his own. He became Raw. Raw. He became Raw Tag Team Champions not once but tw not once but twice. His first vig his first reign actually lasted 24 hours because of the fact that. He won the titles with the 10 year old, which I have to admit was kind of funny. His second run lasted about a few weeks, actually. About a few weeks, maybe a month, I'd say. With Seth Rollins. And they lost the titles on the night of Clash of Champions, where Braun Strowman was given a title opportunity against Seth Rollins for said championship. And then all and then and then of course too, he's won money. He's won he's won money in the bank. He's won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. He's won. He's won the Intercontinental Championship, and he's even won. He and now he's the Universal Champion. Bray Wyatt. He's a former. He's a former SmackDown Tag Team Champion. He's a former Raw Tag Team Champion. He's a former WWE Champion. He's a former Universal Champion. And he's done. And Bray Wyatt has done a lot of crazy things. And if you guys are wondering why I'm point, I'm facing my face this way. I'm actually looking at, at, at my TV right now. I'm actually watching NCIS right now. So shoutouts to NCIS. I believe the name the name of the episode is Trolls. Of where this kid is, where is, it's where this kid has a bomb in his backpack and he's on a bus. Anyway, that being said, anyway. Anyway, en enough about that. So Bray Wyatt made a bit of a a bit of a resurgence, if you will, um, after after Matt Hardy was taken out due to an injury, and he 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 once again went at it on his own, and he targeted so many superstars. He targeted he targeted Jerry Lawler, Mick Foley, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, so many so 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 many guys, even Kane, even Kane. And even also the Miz. Now, now, now he's targeting Braun Strowman because of the fact that Bray Wyatt has has, in his words, something that Bray Wyatt wants, which is the Universal Title. This is something that this is a very interesting matchup because you have two powerhouses, two super heavyweights colliding. You have Bray Wyatt, who is about as demented as it can get, and then you got Braun Strowman who knows who he is, knows what he does, and loves what he does, and knows what he wants. And what he wants is to be the best that he is to be the best is to be the best champion that he can possibly be. Bray Wyatt, we all know you. We all know Bray Wyatt never cared about that. All he cared about was taking the Universal Championship. And changing people into what into the into heels, which it which it which happens for Finn Balor, it happened for the Miz, it even happened for Seth Rollins, and Seth Rollins is the Money Night Messiah, and the Miz, well, he's back with John with with Morrison. So I highly doubt that I I I. I highly doubt that Bray Wyatt will ever change Braun Strowman, so I'm going to go with Braun Strowman on this one. Whoa. And the bus actually just ex actually exploded. 
with the kid inside. Damn. Anyway, anyway, next up, next up we have Bailey versus Tamina for the SmackDown Women's Championship, <clears throat> which actually started out at WrestleMania when, if I believe, was on. Yes, yes, it, it, it was actually on night on night two of WrestleMania, and that match was a six was originally supposed to have been a six pack challenge, but because the Dana Brooke was taken out, you know, with what's been going on in the world today, it became a fatal five way elimination match. Bailey, the champion, Lacey Evans, Tamina, Naomi, and Sasha Banks. The order, if you guys remember that prediction, if, if you guys remember the result video that I made for WrestleMania that night, you will know that the that the eliminations went as follows. Tamina, Naomi, Sasha Banks, and Lacey Evans, with Bailey retaining the SmackDown women's title. It took four it took all four women. It took Banks, Naomi, Evans, and Bailey to eliminate Tamina. Because they knew Tamina was a big threat. Now, Tamina is an even bigger threat now that, that the match is one-on-one. -on -one. And we all know that Sasha Banks could very may well get involved. But you never know what can happen on Sunday. And given the fact that, that this is Tamina's... I believe this is her first one-on-one, -on -one, actual one-on-one -on -one title match, title opportunity. Tamina cannot cannot like screw this up because if she does her career is just gonna go downhill like that so i'm gonna go with tamina on this one all right you guys now we have both the men's and women's money in the bank ladder match which will both happen at the exact same time so the rules so normally the rules will be climb the ladder grab the briefcase you can do whatever the hell you want with it you know you know you know, cash it in on any champion, anytime, anywhere for up to a year. That was normally that would be the case, but this is this is a unique matchup because because both the men's and women's matches will happen at the exact same time at WWE headquarters in Stanford from the ground floor. The goal is to work your way up to each floor, and when you get to the roof, climb the ladder, grab the briefcase. It's basic. It's ba I, I. I know. I sh I know. I shouldn't say this because it's wrong to say, but this is basically a suicide mission. Literally, it's like it's basically. It's like it's like you're playing Call of Duty, but for real. But instead of using guns and knives and whatnot, you're you're using corporate tables, ladders. You're using catering. You're using Vince McMahon's office, Triple H's office, and pretty much whatever the hell you can find at your disposal. Even an elevator. Yeah. Yeah. Odds are someone could be... Th my, camera, my camera just moved. Anyway, odds are we could potentially see someone being thrown over, literally over the top, over the roof. Literally just... Boom. We could see that happen. Which would be catastrophic. Which would be catastrophic. So it's... Ha so I... It's... I get... I mean, I guess it's... Hashtag YOLO. I guess. So, so the combatants for both the men's and women's matches will be as follows. So we have... So for the men, we have Daniel Bryan, Alistair Black... Rey Mysterio, Baron Corbin, Otis, and originally it was supposed to have been Apollo Crews. But if you guys remember, what was it, last week? Not this past Monday, but last week on Raw? He challenged Andrade for the United States title, which unfortunately ended in, in a no, I guess in a in a no contest, uh, because Apollo Crews tweaked his knee and was taken out in, in indefinitely. He wasn't able to compete for Money in the Bank. So a gauntlet match was was held this past Monday on Raw, which had which had Bobby Lashley, Akira Tozawa, I 
think uh, uh, Shelton Benjamin, Umberto Carrillo, Angel Garza, Austin Theory, and AJ Styles. Those were the seven combatants. Yes, a yes, yes, you, you heard me right. AJ Styles returned. He returned to Monday Night Raw after being away for a week, for, for literally a month, after being buried six feet deep in from that Boneyard match, which, if you guys don't, if you guys didn't watch The Bump earlier today, uh, WWE's The Bump on YouTube or, or the network or, or Facebook, AJ Styles, once again, called out The Undertaker, said that he wasn't done. Like, dude, it's like, dude, are you serious? Like, you would think he would learn. You'd think people like Styles would learn not to call out The Undertaker like he did. But with that being said, yes, those are the superstars for the men, for the women. We have we have Asuka, Shayna Baszler, Nia Jax from Raw, Dana Brooke, Lacey Evans, and Carmella from SmackDown. So this is unique. This is kind of interesting because we could potentially see a male superstar screw over a fe screw over a a a, a female superstar, and vice versa. We could see that. We could see that happen, which is a possibility. So, if I had to pick the odds-on favorite, hands down, hands down, Rey Mysterio, hands down, in terms of the women... I would have to say Shayna Baszler. I think she could be the big. She could be a big threat. She could be a big threat to to the match. Now, in terms of who the dark horse would be, hands down, has to be. It has to be a. It has to be AJ Styles because of the fact that AJ Styles made his return to WWE, and with the fact that, with the fact that he's only been in one other Money the Main ladder match, um, he's got to be the dark horse in 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 that match. Now for the women, ooh, I gotta go with Carmella on this. I, I think Carmella Kavrimi will be the dark horse in the match, just because of the fact that Carmella has won the Money in the Bank ladder match once before, or in her eyes twice before. Even though the second one didn't really count, I guess I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, so definitely Carmella. Anyway, um, so if but if I but if I had to pick between. But you know, if I you know if I had to pick, uh, I gotta go with Alistair Black and Lacey Evans. I think those two deserve it. They truly deserve it. All right, you guys, that is actually gonna do it for this prediction video. Question of the day: What are your guys' predictions for this match card? For this card as it, as it stands now. Um, obviously, there will be more. Uh, announced in in the next several days, um, so so as so as the card stands, what are what are your predictions? Comment below. Use the hashtag MITB and comment below your predictions for the card as it stands. And that is gonna do it for this video. Hope hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you guys smash the thumbs up button if you guys are new to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss out on any new content that comes your way because you guys know when it comes, you guys know there's always something new every time I make, every time I post. Every time I post, there's always something good. You know, whether it's for WWE or for Yu-Gi-Oh, there's always something good. And also too, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, links to my to both of my Twitters and my one Instagram will be in the description below. And I know that I did I did put this on hold, but if you guys have any fan mail that you would like to send me, my address will also be in the description below. I'm I'm gonna try to get to get a PO box soon. I'm not so sure when, but hopefully hopefully once this thing once this quarantine go you know is done, we can go back to our no, to our normal routine. I will try to to get a PO box. Hopefully I can. And on that, this is your boy Nash, signing out.